Okay, so, before I explain the timelines and primer, I'll assume you've already seen the film. So you know that the film follows Abe and Aaron, two engineers who invent a machine that frees objects from the effects of gravity, and sort of accidentally also frees objects from the effects of time. Now, you can't use this time machine to meet Socrates, or your future descendants, but you can travel to any point in the history of the machine itself. Abe learns this first, so he builds two machines, or boxes. One that he can use as a day-to-day -day time travel box, and the other that he keeps running as a failsafe box. With that failsafe box, he can travel to just after he built the machines, but right before he started using them. That way, he can sabotage the machines so they don't work, and his former self will think time travel doesn't work. That failsafe box is like a big fat reset button. Also, before we start, understand that I won't talk about the birthday party, and I also won't worry too much about the mystery of Granger, because even Abe and Aaron admit that on a certain level those events are unknowable, so we can calm down about those story beats and focus on the main story. Abe, Aaron, and a jug of milk. Abe lives a full day, uses his time travel box, travels to the beginning of the day, and gets out. Satisfied that the box works, he meets with Aaron. Abe explains his discovery, and he even shows Aaron, his former self, walking toward the box. So Aaron decides to travel back in time with Abe. They build a box for Aaron, hide themselves in a hotel, find a stock that gains over the day, and then they use the boxes, and travel back to the beginning of the day, and get out. Reliving the day, they invest in the stock and make some serious money. Oh, and Aaron's wife says she hears rats in the attic. They decide to travel back in time again. They hide themselves in a hotel, and find more stocks, and use the boxes again, so they can travel back to the beginning of the day, and get out. Once they're out, Aaron gets an ear bleed, but they see their stocks gain once again, so they decide to keep time traveling. However, this time, Aaron accidentally brings his phone and gets a call from his wife. They use the boxes, travel back to the beginning of the day, and get out. But then Aaron gets the call from his wife again, which means that Aaron in the hotel didn't. This is a paradox, but nobody's fading away or turning into goo time cop style. Now that they know they can change the past, Abe and Aaron decide to test that ability, but they're interrupted by Thomas Granger, a former investor of theirs who's somehow both catatonic on the ground and answering his phone at home. Abe, with no idea of how or when Granger got hold of a box, decides to use the failsafe, that big fat reset button, because things are getting out of control. But if he's going to live his ordinary day-to-day -day life, he has to get his former self out of the way. So he gasses his old self and sticks him in a closet. Abe returns to the bench where he first pitched time travel to Aaron, but in shock from both the time travel and gassing himself, Abe collapses. But not before he hears Aaron's headphones, playing back a conversation they haven't had yet, but will. So while we thought their time travel paths looked like this, we know something really screwy is going on. So we need to go all the way back to the beginning, back to the very first day, and find out what actually happened. So, satisfied that the box works, Abe meets with Aaron, and Abe explains the discovery. Abe even shows Aaron his former self walking toward the box. Aaron decides to travel back in time with Abe. They build a box for Aaron, hide themselves in a hotel, and find a good stock that gains over the day. They use the boxes, travel to the beginning of the day, and get out. Reliving the day, they invest in some good stock and make some money. But then, without Abe knowing, Aaron goes to the storage facility and accidentally learns that Abe made that failsafe box. And Aaron quickly figures out that if Abe built a failsafe, Abe could press that big fat reset button at any time and keep Aaron from ever learning about time travel. So, Aaron breaks down the box he and Abe made that day, brings it into Abe's failsafe, travels back to the beginning, gets out of the box with his own broken down box, makes that broken down box into his own failsafe, delays Abe's failsafe slightly, and now Aaron has the big fat reset button. But like Abe, Aaron has to drug his old self, so he puts on a hoodie, sticks some sedative in his old self's cereal, and stuffs his old self in the attic. So life resumes, but now Aaron not only knows what's coming, he also starts audio recording this timeline, so he'll have a script in case he ever needs to go back and play it all over again. So when we look back at the film now, we see that Aaron pretended to be surprised when he saw Abe's double, and he went through the motions the second day. They stayed in the hotel, they used the box, and they traveled back to the beginning of the day. But when Aaron's wife complains about rats, 
We know now she's actually complaining about the drugged up Aaron in the attic. And after they decide to time travel again, we can guess that Aaron's crappy handwriting is a side effect of too much time travel. And after they go back in time again, we can guess that Aaron's ear bleed is a side effect of too much time travel. And after they decided time travel one more time, we realize that Aaron already knew he could change the past. So his surprise over the phone call was some more of that acting, which looks a lot faker in retrospect. And when they learned about Granger, Aaron must have figured Abe would try to use his failsafe. So Aaron must have used his failsafe too to stay one step ahead of Abe. And now Aaron has one big problem, getting his hoodie-wearing time-traveling self out of the way. So he, the real Aaron, whatever that means anymore, can relive his former timeline. But this time his hasty plan is to just sort of bull rush himself. It's a crappy plan and it doesn't work. However, he does somehow persuade Hoodie Aaron to leave. So, at the end of Primer, it looks like there are two Abes and three Aarons. The Abe who's time traveled, the Abe who's coming out of the closet, the Aaron escaping the attic, the Aaron who's going to France, and the Aaron who's acting like he hasn't lived this life twice already. This is what Primer looks like. Unless I'm wrong.